So we're moving forward to the final of uh, the 2025 MIT Integration B. Um, and um, today we'll focus on the fast two problems. Uh, and for the reason that um, we just want to take time, want to be slow, want to be method methodical about it. Um, previously, we've gone through like um, a big swath of, of problems all at the same time. But this time around, we just want to go slow and, and be able to dissect these problems a little bit more uh, carefully. So problem number one was the indefinite integral of the tangent of x times the square root of 2 plus the square root of 4 plus cosine of x. Problem number two was a definite integral from x equals to 0 to x tending to infinity of 1 over uh, the square of x plus 1 plus the floor of 2 times the square root of x. So I these are pretty much cool problems uh, in their own right. Um, so let's begin by uh, looking at problem number one and then see how to proceed. So for this problem, as is the rule, at least how I operate these problems, I usually look for the more complex expression and try to substitute for them. So I look at this integral and I see the more complex expression is the square root of 2 plus the square root of 4 plus cosine of x. So what I do is I say let u be equal to that. And uh, what happens is if I square uh, both sides, I get uh, u squared equals to 2 plus the square root of 4 plus cosine x. And then I pull 2 to the uh, left hand side and we're left with a square root of 4 plus cosine of x on the right hand side. And then when I square the both sides, what happens is um, now all of a sudden the square root sign on the right hand side disappears. And squaring the um, both sides means that on the left hand side we have u to the power of 4 minus 4u squared plus 4 equals to 4 plus cosine x. And as you can see, this 4 here and this 4 here, when we subtract 4 from both sides, it means that we can now uh, remove those um, gracefully so that we have u to the power of 4 minus 4u squared equals to cosine x. Now, um, I be, the light be, I begin to see light at the end of the tunnel here because what I can do now, I can say, let me differentiate uh, with respect to x on both sides. So for uh, u to the power 3 minus 8u, and I can actually even pull the 4 out so that I have 4 times u to the power 3 minus 2u uh, du dx is equal to negative sine x. And uh, what happens is now I can divide um, this on both sides. So I have uh, u to the power of 4 uh, divided on the left hand side minus 40 u squared minus 4 u squared. And then on the right hand side, I can say minus sine x divided by cosine x. And we've pulled this from here. So now you begin to see that um, all of a sudden, uh, we do have a tangent on the right hand side, a negative tangent, but still um, it is akin to what we have here. So we can pull the u out here. So we have 4u and then we're left with u squared minus 2. In the denominator, we can pull u squared out so that we have u squared minus 4 times u squared. One of the u's in the denominator can cancel with the u in the numerator so that now we do have uh, 4 times u squared minus 2 over u times u squared minus 4 du. Um, and if we multiply d dx on both sides, we have negative tan x times d dx on the right hand side. And this here is the same as what we have. This dx times is tangent x. So we can see that all of a sudden uh, we are able to um, transform our problem from the x domain to the u domain in a simple and easy fashion because this part here was substituted for u and this part here was uh, equivalent to 4u squared minus 2 uh, over u times u squared minus 4du. So this u 
and this u uh, will cancel. Um, and there's obviously this negative uh, that came from our uh, derivative of u with respect to x in the previous uh, slide. Um, so we can go ahead and say that now our problem has reverted into a negative times the integral of 4 times u squared minus 2 over u squared minus 4. Um, you know, we could then uh, divide it, long division, so that the expression becomes, we can pull the constant 4 out, 1 plus 2 over u squared minus 4. And this is actually now an easy problem to uh, tackle because now we can express u squared minus 4 as a difference of two squares um, product. So we have u times u minus 2 times u plus 2. And then if we express that as a partial fraction, we have 1 over u minus 2 minus 1 over u plus 2. Uh, times 1 over 4 times 2 here, which is in the numerator, so this just becomes a half. Um, and so um, this is now just easy. We can solve it uh, very uh, easily. Uh, so we'll go and solve that. We have u as the integral of 1, and then we have half natural logarithm of u minus 2 minus natural logarithm of u plus 2. Okay, um, and this is because the numerator is a derivative of the denominators, and so uh, I don't, it, that's a straightforward. If you need further clarification on how we're able to move from here to here, please uh, feel free to write a comment in the comment section. We can explain that very easily. And so using the rules of logarithm, this is the same as when we have a minus uh, between two log functions, we can just say, okay, uh, that's the same as the quotient or the uh, division of whatever is under the log function. So we brought it down to uh, u plus a half log of u minus 2 over u plus 2 plus integration constant. Now there's obviously a negative 4 out here. We can spread that around. So we have negative 4u minus 2 log uh, of u minus 2 over u plus 2. Since we had say that u is the same as the square root of 2 plus the square root of 4 plus cosine x, we can substitute u back into the equation so that our final problem is becomes uh, the integral of tangent of x times the square root of 2 plus the square root of 4 plus cosine x is equal to negative uh, 4. In place of u, we have square root of 2 plus square root of 4 plus cosine x minus 2, natural logarithm of, in place of u, square root of 2 plus the square root of 4 plus cosine x over, uh, over sine cosine x minus 2 over the square root of 2 plus the square root of 4 plus cosine x plus 2 uh, plus the integration constant. And this is, this is the answer that was expected. Um, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, you could play around uh, with um, Personalize the denominator here, but that's just, um, you know, another exercise in something that may not be really necessary. Uh, but this is the answer. Um, if you have any question, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'd be very glad to help explain if you have any uh, hardships anywhere. Now we move forward to problem number two, right? So problem number two, the definite integral from x equals to zero to x tending to infinity of 1 over x plus 1 plus the flow of uh, 2 square root of x uh, squared. Um, the first thing for us here is to really understand what a flow function is. The flow function is obviously um, the integer value of a function. So that if we have a flow function of fx that is equal to k, if fx indeed is greater or equal to k and less than k plus 1. So it's that integer value immediately less than that uh, function uh, value. Um, so for us here, what we can do is now the uh, flow of 2 times the square root of x is equals to k when it is between uh, k and k plus 1. So that when we divide it by 2, uh, what happens is the square root of x 
will lie between these uh, values. And then when we square both uh, limits, so we have k squared over 4, and then on the upper side, we have k plus 1 squared over 4. So in this interval, this value is just going to be a constant k, right? And that now allows us to discretize uh, this integral into some strips. So what we're going to say is that, okay, our integral now is the same as uh, the sum of uh, specific integrals, and that integral begins with, uh, that sum begins from k equals to 0 to infinity, and in every k strip, kth strip, we have um, the integral from k squared over 4 to k plus 1 uh, squared over 4 of 1 over x plus 1 plus k squared. So that's how we've defined our problem statement there. Now it's easy to proceed and say, okay, uh, what is the, that integral? Um, that integral is um, simple. It's the same as 1 over uh, x plus 1 plus k negative, and obviously the limits applied appropriately, so that now we can since this is continuous within that interval, uh, we'll just subtract the upper limit substituted in place of x minus the lower, uh, minus this with the lower limit substituted in place of x. Because this is a minus minus and there's a minus here, we can flip so that now we have um, this 4 multiplied both the numerator and denominator. We have now 4 over k squared plus 4 plus 4k minus multiply 4 across, we have 4 over k plus 1 squared plus 4 plus 4k. Um, we can pull the 4 out so that now we have 1 over k plus 2 squared, this is k plus 2 squared, minus 1 over k plus 1 squared, pull the 4 out here, we have 4, plus, 4 times k plus 1. Um, so that's what we have. Um, what do we do next? Um, let's see, we could um, just re-express this part as k plus 1 plus 2 squared minus 4. Um, and that is because, as you can see, this appears like a quadratic expression, only that it's missing uh, the 4 at the end. So that's why the 2 squared can be now uh, accounted for by subtracting 4 at the end, which is the same as uh, 1 over k plus 2 squared minus 1 over uh, the summation, just splitting the summation, minus 4, summation of 1 over k plus 3, this is 1 plus 2 squared minus 4. Now that's uh, um, obviously um, interesting because this summation can be looked at as a summation from k equals to 2 or 1 over k squared minus um, what we have here. This is the same as beginning from k equals to 3 um, and k squared minus 4. So um, we can re-express uh, a few things here. Um, this second sum can be coded, color coded into a blue uh, summation, just to make things a little bit easy uh, to visualize. And so uh, we have now this first sum here is the same as 4 times the summation from k equals to 1 from, to infinity. And to account for the 1 that was not in this original summation, we're introducing a minus 4 of 1 over 1 squared. So when you see this, this is the same as the Bezel problem. So for those of us who know this, it's the same as pi squared over 6. So it's straightforward. It's If you don't know about it, uh, please go to Wikipedia and type in Bezel problem, B-A-S-E-L uh, problem. Um, so um, in this second one here, we can re-express this as um, difference of 2 squares. So we have k minus 2. Uh, k plus 2, and we can express that as a partial fraction um, in 
way. So you see we've introduced here pi squared over 6 here. And this 1 over 1 squared is just 1, so times 4 is 4. And so here, uh, in expressing it as a partial fraction means that we have to multiply it by a quarter. So that's why we have 4 over 4. So this becomes 4 times pi squared over 6 is 2 pi squared over 3 minus 4. And 4 over 4 is 1. But let's now begin. When k equals to 3, it's the same as 1 over 1 minus 1 over 5. So 3 plus 2 here is 5. And then when k equals to 4, that's the same as 1 over 4 minus 2, which is 1 over 2 minus 1 over 6, and so on. And you realize that when now we reach here, this a fifth here cancels with this a fifth. And a ninth here is going to cancel with ninth that is going to appear um, at some point. Um, and so a fifth one after this we're going to get one over six and that is going to cancel with this and so on so this is a telescoping uh, series except that this 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 and this will remain uh, so our problem now becomes two pi squared over three minus four uh, minus one plus a half plus a third plus a quarter now we can um, re-express that uh, common denominator is 12 so 12 divided by 1 is 1 12 times 1 is 12 12 divided by 2 6 times 1 6 12 divided by 3 is 4 times 1 4 12 divided by 4 is 3 by 1 um, 3 and when we add this up it becomes 25 and we still have a 4 here um, so uh, to merge these constants together, the non-pi terms here, we multiply 12 by 4 is 48, 48 by plus 25, it's going to be equal to now 2 pi squared over 3 minus 48 plus 25 over 12, which is uh, 2 pi squared over 3 minus 73 over 12. And that's the final answer that was expected from this problem. Um, so I hope um, we've done a better job of explaining uh, how this problem could, these problems could be solved. Um, if you do have any questions or uh, it's just something you're not getting, um, feel free to reach out to us. We, we would love to explain this to you. Uh, so until next time, have a blessed day and bye-bye.